Okay, so I think it is time to begin. So today the first speaker is Zelniu um, from UC Santa Barbara, and she's going to tell us about periodic L functions for GSP4 cross GL2. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the introduction uh, and the invitation. And uh, so uh, today I, I'm going to talk about uh, a construction of uh, PIDL functions for GSP4 cross GL2. Uh, so first I'm going to explain the, the setting. So first I'm going to uh, fix a odd prime number P and also I'm going to fix an isomorphism before, uh, between QP bar and uh, complex numbers. And also I'm going to have a uh, automorphic irreducible capital automorphic representations, capital pi, uh, which is the, the, the representation of uh, GSP4. Uh, and uh, it's generated by an ordinary Ziegler modular form phi of uh, scalar weight L. And also I'm going to take another uh, automorphic representation of a GL2 uh, denoted by small pi and uh, generated by, again, an ordinary uh, modular form. I denote it by F and uh, the weight is L. So now I'm assuming that actually the, the weights of the form on GSP4 and the, the weight on the form, uh, of the form on GL2 are both L. Uh, so this assumption is because for some uh, to compute some uh, uh, local, uh, some Archimedean data integrals. Uh, if we uh, remove this assumption, then the, the result will contain an Archimedean data integral, which is not completely computed. So in, in the, under this assumption that uh, um, the result is cleaner. And uh, also I'm gonna fix, uh, capital S, which is a finite set of places of Q uh, containing both uh, the place P and uh, the Archimedean place. And also I will assume that uh, outside uh, this set S uh, places uh, outside the, the set S, uh, both the phi and the F are uh, spherical. Okay, so this is the setting. And uh, now I'm gonna say the, the results. So uh, we prove that there exists a periodic L function attached to this capital pi and the small pi, uh, which is actually a, a measure on this uh, space. Uh, the finite Adel Edels quotient by uh, rationals and also by um, a compact part away from P and the uh, value in QP bar uh, such that it satisfies certain uh, interpolation properties. So for any Uh, the Shelley character chi so by the Shelley character I mean it's a finite order uh, character so unramified away from, uh, from P and uh, uh, infinity. And uh, also for an integer uh, K between two and uh, L plus one over two. So this L is the, the weight for both the um, forms on the GSP4 and the GL2. And uh, uh, then because I fixed I isomorphism be between QP bar and the C. So I, if I consider this character chi times the norm to the power of K, uh, I can get a periodic avatar, which is uh, gonna be a P 
chaotic character uh, of this space. And so I can evaluate the measure at this character. And uh, this is gonna give us uh, a constant C then times uh, the partial L function valued at 2K minus epsilon over two. Then the dual representation of capital pi times the dual representation of small pi then twisted by the Dirichlet character pi. Uh, so here the, um, The epsilon actually is about some parity. So it's gonna be E zero uh, if L is even and is one if L is odd. So that means uh, when L is even actually the, uh, the critical points of this L function is our integers. When L is odd, the critical points are half integers. So the L function is normalized uh, to have the center at one half and uh, this uh, L function is actually a degree eight uh, periodic, uh, sorry, this L function is a degree eight uh, L function. And uh, this is the uh, L value, critical L value we're interested in. And um, for periodic interpolation, actually we're gonna have some modified uh, oil factor at P and infinity. So I also have the, The modified oil factor at P and also the modified oil factor at infinity. So both are defined uh, uh, following the uh, codes and the parent wheel. And uh, okay, so and also I need to explain what is the, the C. So this constant C Okay, so this constant C will uh, involve actually the, the Whitaker period of the modular form on GL2 and also this part of the a Bessel period for the uh, Ziegel modular form on GSP4. And so the, the Bessel period will depend on a S and the lambda. So this S is actually a uh, two by two uh, symmetric form. Uh, with the uh, integers on the diagonal and half integers on the alpha diagonal and it's gonna be a positive definite. And the lambda is gonna be a finite order Hecker character of the imaginary quadratic field uh, generated by the negative of the determinant of this S. And uh, it's gonna be also unramified away from S. And also we require that uh, its restriction to Q is uh, equal to the central character of the capital pi. And uh, also we have uh, another assumption that away from uh, away from S and the, the four times the determinant is actually the discriminant of a K tensor QV over QV. And also we require this uh, 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 C to be, uh, so the uh, lower right block, entry here is actually, um, and also is the index for the uh, Whitaker period to be in uh, DB cross. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the result. Um, and, uh, and next I'm gonna just uh, uh, sketch uh, the, the ingredients uh, uh, in the construction of this uh, PIDL function. Okay, so uh, so before maybe before uh, starting explaining the construction, I make a couple of remarks about previous work on this type of uh, periodic function. So um, there is a work by Agawa 
who also considered this PLDL function, but his result is kind of a bit perpendicular to what we're considering here. So uh, here we fix capital pi and small pi, and we have a cyclotomic variable. And in his case, uh, he uh, let the capital pi and the small pi vary in families, and uh, but fix the cyclotomic variable. So he considers the critical value to the rightmost of the critical strip. And also uh, in his work, actually the um, local uh, factors at P uh, was not completely computed. And uh, uh, there is another uh, work more recent uh, by Lofler, Piloni, uh, Skinner and Zerbis where they construct a PIL function for uh, GSP4 and the GSP4 plus GL2. And in, in his case, in, sorry, in their case, actually they, um, uh, because they use a different automorphic integral to study the L values than the one uh, I use here. So in the work of Agawa, actually, uh, he also used the same automorphic integral that I will use here. And uh, in this work, Lofler, Piloni, and the Skinner and the Zerbis, they use a different automorphic integral. So they will have kind of, a, so first they, they have a different period showing up and uh, they also assume some different assumptions. So they assume that uh, the pi is a Klingon ordinary instead of here, uh, ordinary here. And uh, uh, they assume it's a generic instead of uh, here is a, a uh, holomorphic, holomorphic at infinity, and uh, they also have an assumption that is away from unramified away from P, and uh, but they actually uh, handled all the vector cases, uh, vector weights. Okay, so this is some uh, the remark. Okay, so next I'm gonna uh, start explaining the. Excuse me. So in your work and in their work, please always ordinary or near the ordinary? Oh. So in my work, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, in my work, I, I assume that uh, uh, it's all the, the representation of the form is ordinary at P. And in their work, it's uh, uh, actually the, the assumption is a uh, clean ordinary. So usually when we say ordinary, it's actually um, the ordinary with respect to, to the Borel uh, subgroup. Uh, in in their case, they, they assume a different ordinary assumption, which is uh, with respect to the, the, the Klingon uh, parabolic. Oh, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so the 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 the, the first ingredient in, in the construction will be an uh, automorphic integral that helps us study this. Uh, L functions and uh, its critical values. And uh, so let me first uh, explain the automorphic integral uh, we use here. So actually the, uh, the integral we're gonna use is the uh, Furosawa's formula. Uh, so um, in this formula, so first we, we have a representation pi on GL2 and this GL2 naturally embed into this uh, 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 unitary group uh, GU11, which is the unitary group associated, uh, the quasi split unitary group associated to a skew uh, Hermitian form over K. So here, the uh, over K, the the K is the uh, the K is the imaginary quadratic field we saw before, which is generated by the the square root of the negative of the determinants of the symmetric form uh, S. Um, so by uh, by picking a heck character uh, for this imaginary quadratic field, I call it a, a upsilon, and such that its restriction to Q is isomorphic to the central character of this uh, uh, small pi on GL2, I can, uh, from this pi, I will obtain an automorphic uh, representation, I call it a pi uh, upsilon, which is automorphic representation of a GU11. So from GL2, the representation of GL2 will get a representation of GU11. And uh, also we have a natural embedding of a GSP4 inside this uh, quasi-split unitary group, GU22. And inside this GU22, we have a Klingon parabolic subgroup. 
and its Levy subgroup is isomorphic to uh, K cross and the GU11. So therefore we can, uh, from this Levy subgroup, uh, we can just uh, put this uh, pi upsilon on this GU11 piece and uh, put a character on this uh, K cross piece, then we we'll can get an induced representation. And then we'll get a so-called Klingen Eisenstein series on GU22. So more precisely on this GU11 uh, piece, I'm gonna induce this part, which is uh, a twist of uh, this pi upsilon. And, uh, and on this uh, K cross piece, I'm gonna have uh, such a character. And also, then I have this uh, Klingeis instance series on GU22, then I can restrict it back to GSP4. And uh, then I integrate against a Zigo modular form inside the representation capital pi. So this is the automorphic integral. And uh, Furosawa showed that actually this integral will factorize into a product of local data integrals. And this local data integrals will involve the Bessel model of the representation on GSP4 and uh, the uh, Whitaker model for the representation on GLQ. And also he computed that if uh, everything is unramified at the place V, then this local integral will be equal uh, to this uh, ratio of L functions and uh, uh, the denominator, uh, sorry, the numerator is actually the L function we are uh, interested in. So this is the uh, Furosawa's formula, which used the Klinger Eisenstein series on GU22 uh, and uh, integrated against Zigo modular form to get the degree eight L function. And uh, from if we look at this. Um, automorphic integral here, uh, then in order to construct a PRDL function, what a uh, natural thing to do is to uh, first construct a periodic families of this Klingen Eisenstein series on GU22, and then to pair with the Zigo modular form, then we can get a periodic L function. And this is exactly uh, what Agawa did in his work. Um, he used the Klingeisen stencils constructed uh, by Skinner Bond uh, in their work uh, for proving the U.S. Alman conjecture. So they used that Klingen. The uh, he put that Klingeisen stencil family here, and uh, get and uh, obtained uh, the periodic function. But we already, as we said in the remark, that in his work he didn't include. Uh, the cyclotomic variable. Uh, the reason is because actually the Klinger Eisenstein series uh, constructed by Skinner one is ordinary on GU22, but actually experience tells us uh, usually when we construct PIDL function uh, using this kind of uh, uh, Eisenstein series on a bigger group, usually we, uh, if we want all the variables we don't want the ordinary uh, the we, we don't want the ordinary Eisenstein series on a bigger group like here on GU22. Actually, uh, what we want is um, actually we need some further uh, modification of those uh, Eisenstein series on GU22, like applying some uh, uh, differential operators or some twist uh, at the place p. In the end, actually the Klinger-Einstein family will have uh, the Fourier coefficient should, should be supported uh, as the the matrix which is the uh, actually determining is the co prime to p, and so uh, in particular the the, the UPN value degree should be uh, zero. So therefore, uh, so that that is saying that we we in order to get the cyclotomic variable. Uh, we cannot directly use the clean guys series constructed by uh, by Skinner one. And we need to further modify that clean guys series. And uh, 
So that means we need more study of clean gas incidence series, but in order to construct the periodic family, usually uh, on this kind of uh, uh, quasi split groups, uh, we, we will consider uh, interpolating the, the Q expansions. But uh, we also know that the, the Q expansion of a clean gas incidence series is actually kind of uh, complicated to compute. So therefore, uh, actually uh, this, Uh, this automorphic integral is not uh, super convenient uh, for what we want to do here. Uh, so therefore what we do is I'm gonna uh, modify a little bit of this uh, uh, automorphic integral to, to make it uh, more convenient for constructing PIDL function. So just a, a very uh, small modification. So what we do is that uh, we know that for constructing the clean Eisenstein family on GU22, uh, what Skinner Brand used is a uh, generalization of the doubling method by uh, by Gard, which expressed the clean Eisenstein on GU22 as an integral of the Ziegel Eisenstein series on GU33 against the modular form. And so that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna just combine the uh, through Sabers formula. Uh, and uh, Gara's generalization. Uh, of uh, the doubling method for, formula. Uh, to rewrite the above integral as the following one. So I'm gonna consider the uh, Ziegel Eisenstein series. on GU33, and then I will restrict this Eisenstein series to the GSP4 times GU11. Uh, so here, this uh, sub GL1 means I require these uh, two factors have the same uh, uh, similitude. So uh, therefore, uh, actually, uh, this group will naturally embed into GU33. And then uh, on this group, it's going to integrate against the Ziegel modular form. And the form on GU11 obtained from the modular form on GSP4 and uh, a further twist by a character. And here, the uh, Ziegel Eisenstein series is actually induced from the Ziegel parabolic, which is uh, a GL3 uh, of K, and uh, it's induced actually from a, a character. So it's uh, inducing a character. So here k is a Dirichlet character. I put a uh, subscript k here to mean that uh, it's just uh, the base change to k. So it's just uh, the k composed with, with uh, the norm from k to q. And I consider this integral. And uh, then you just uh, use uh, the result from these two uh, uh, integral formulas, uh, I will get, I will, we will see that it, it, it is actually uh, factorized uh, to a product of uh, local data integrals.
and also uh, by the above results, we, we, we can easily see that um, for uh, VE not inside S, so meaning that if everything is uh, unramified, then the local data integrals equals So the L function we're interested in. And uh, uh, divided by a factor, uh, which is actually a product of uh, uh, heck L functions. And uh, this factor actually uh, is exactly the uh, normalization factor uh, for the uh, when we consider the periodic families of uh, Ziegel Eisen stand series. So that means if we do a uh, periodic interpolation, and then uh, this factor, uh, if we normalize the Ziegel Eisen stand series uh, to do periodic interpolation, this factor will, will go away. So this is actually, now this, this is the, the modified uh, automorphic integral we're going to use. So it has a uh, uh, the advantage is that it only involves this uh, Ziegel Eisenstein series, which is an Eisenstein series of a uh, uh, much simpler type than uh, Klinger Eisenstein series. And um, one can uh, compute the, the, the Fourier coefficients of uh, uh, Ziegel Eisenstein series without much difficulty. And also, there is a, maybe there is a, another small bonus is that uh, uh, with this. Um, integral, we, we see that uh, the local data integrals uh, on ramified places actually, it becomes uh, simpler. Uh, it essentially, it's only the, the L function we're interested in. And uh, this denominator showing the original for Sawa's formula uh, just uh, disappear. Okay, so this is the, the modified uh, a modification of the full Sauber formula and is the uh, automorphic integral we're gonna use to do our construction. So what next we do is to, to construct a periodic family of Ziegel Eisenstein series on GU33. Okay, so that's the mm, next step. Okay, so what we want to do is that, so we want to interpolate the L values at uh, uh, 2K minus epsilon over two and, uh, and also uh, twisted by additional character K. So we have a given a K and uh, a, a chi. Um, uh, we want to pick uh, a section inside this uh, induction of a character uh, from the uh, induction of the character from the Ziegel parabolic, so which is degenerate principle series. We want to pick a section here, and uh, then we can uh, uh, form a, get a Ziegel Eisenstein series. So, uh, so inside this induction actually is uh, the, the smooth functions on uh, GU33, and such that the left translation by the elements in the Ziegel parabolic is given by a, uh, by a character here. Okay, so, so such that uh, we will, can show that there exists a periodic measure uh, E, uh, which is on this space, in which and the value in the holomorphic forms on GSP4 cos GL2. Actually, we can uh, specify the level. So therefore, actually, it's really valued on a finite dimensional space uh, with the following property that uh, if we evaluate at the uh, periodic avatar of this character chi times the norm to the kth power, it is equal to the Ziegel Eisenstein series attached to our chosen section. Uh, then evaluate at S equals uh, K minus three over two, then restricted 
from GU22 to GSP4 cross uh, GU11. And then I apply the ordinary projection. So this is going to be the, the evaluation of the, uh, the measure as the uh, PID character. So this is uh, uh, what we uh, want to get. So that means we, what we want is uh, now we want to do is to choose the local sections that will uh, satisfy our purpose. OK, so next, uh, today I'm going to just uh, focus on the just the one place, the, the, the place P, to see the choice of this section. And also to see the uh, computation of local data integrals. So next, I'm going to focus on uh, the place P. So at P, uh, uh, we're going to use the section of a special type uh, li like this. So at P, we're going to use the special type section like this. So in here, the A, B, C, D is written uh, in three by it elements in G 33 three written in three by three blocks. And uh, uh, I will use this type of section that's sending this A, B, C, D uh, to essentially here, phi, which is a Schwarz function on the uh, three by three Hermitian uh, matrices. Uh, so the phi uh, valued, the Schwarz function valued C uh, inverse D, and then times this uh, bunch of factors to, to make sure it uh, belongs to uh, uh, this induction uh, space. And so uh, in particular, we, we see here, uh, uh, this phi is a Schwarz function. So C inverse, we, we can uh, in, inverse C, that means C is here. This block is, is invertible. So in particular, we, we see that this section uh, is supported on the open cell of the uh, uh, Borja uh, decomposition uh, for the Ziegel parabolic. So therefore, th this type of section often also called a big cell uh, section. So this is the section we're going to uh, use here. This is a section which is uh, easy to, to write down, like here. And also, uh, the Fourier, uh, local Fourier coefficient is also very easy. If you compute, you will see the, its contribution to Fourier expansion uh, will just be the, the Fourier transform of this uh, Schwarz function phi. Okay, so so we have this. We want to use this type of section. So, so therefore, we reduce the choice uh, of a section uh, f sub k chi to the choice of uh, a Schwarz function on this uh, three by three Hermitian space. Okay, so for this choice, we then to to choose this Schwarz function, then we need some more data from our our, our representation. So when we have assumed the ordinary and ordinary with respect to the Borel subgroup uh, for this capital pi and the small pi. And uh, in particular, uh, this will imply that uh, the P component is isomorphic to a subportion of the uh, induction from the Borel of certain characters here. So I'm gonna denote, uh, use the character either one, either three, uh, eta two, eta one, eta three, and the cosi one, cosi two, 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 two denotes uh, the characters of the Borel in the induction. And uh, so uh, once I have this, I'm gonna uh, explain what's the choice of the, uh, the, the Schwarz function we're gonna use. So I'm gonna take the P component of the section uh, to be the the section of above type, which means the big cell section. Associated to, I call it this uh, Schwarz function, uh, phi sub chi, so it, it only depends on chi. Um, so this, this stress function 
uh, can be described in terms of its uh, Fourier transform. So its Fourier transform has the following description. So it's gonna be a function on the three by three uh, Hermitian space. So its value is gonna be, so first I will uh, require to be supported on the uh, integral points. So the, and uh, then I will have some factors of so first, then I will uh, require this, uh, uh, W12 minus its conjugation is inside uh, supported on ZP cross. Uh, so actually it's uh, times a uh, times a purely imaginary element of K is uh, supported on ZP cross. And then uh, take a character. So here, this alpha, this alpha is an element uh, inside K uh, written in terms of the entries of the uh, symmetric form uh, I chose at the beginning. So here, this is a, a purely imaginary, so here it's purely imaginary and the product is gonna be ZP cross. And uh, I will require to be this element to be supported on ZP cross and also I have a character here. So essentially gonna be the, the neighbor typers, inter neighbor typers of uh, the induced characters for capital pi and small pi and uh, the pi. And uh, also moreover, I have uh, some, other factors uh, in, in terms of W13 and the W23. So, Okay, so this is the uh, the section we choose here. So maybe um, let me uh, quickly uh, explain uh, uh, somehow this, maybe a bit some ideas how we come up with this section of this form. So first, if you look at uh, if you look at this thing, so first I'm gonna require the support of the whole thing is integral and the support they are integral and. Uh, uh, also, I will have one term here, which is about this part, the difference between W12 and the W12 bar. And also the other two terms is in terms of uh, the elements here and uh, here. And uh, uh, if you take a look, you will see that, uh, so, 
uh, the parts of here and here, actually they are actually in terms of uh, this uh, W12 minus W12 bar and uh, W13, W13 bar and W23, W23 bar. So actually they are essentially the functions on uh, this uh, five uh, coordinates. So this is actually uh, is a uh, QP a basis of this uh, three by three, uh, the space of three by three Hermitian uh, matrices uh, quotient uh, quotient by the symmetric two by two symmetric matrices over QP and uh, times the one by one Hermitian matrices over K. So we can see that uh, this part, this part, if we quotient out by the two by two symmetric, then we see that this W12 minus W12 uh, bar will um, be a basis. And uh, also here will be the, the, the piece of uh, the Hermitian, the one by one Hermitian, and then what left is here, this, this two part. So in total, we have this uh, uh, five uh, elements as a QP basis of this quotient. And uh, so this quotient, so we know that uh, uh, this Hermitian, three by three Hermitian actually is the unipotent of the Ziegler parabolic for GU33. And this symmetric, uh, two by two symmetry actually is the embedding of the um, unipotent of the Ziegler parabolic of uh, GSP4. And this part is the embedding of the unipotent of the uh, uh, Zigo parabolic of uh, GU11. So the idea here is actually uh, when we uh, choose this uh, Schwarz function, what, what we want is to, uh, to, to, to have a function that is in, in, uh, in terms of uh, this, this quotient. So we, we want to portion out the contribution from GSP4 and uh, GU11 because uh, they are the, the, the smaller group that later we want to restrict to. So what we want is to construct this section in terms of things uh, outside this part. So therefore, this, uh, in, the, in this quotient, we have these uh, five elements. So therefore, uh, uh, we, are gonna, we want to uh, come up with a Schwarz function just in terms of the, uh, the, the a coordinate of uh, uh, the basis of this, uh, this quotient. OK, so this is kind of a, uh, a very uh, maybe a common strategy for, for choosing uh, uh, sections for constructing this uh, uh, PIDL function. So you, uh, if you have bigger group and smaller group, so when you construct sections, you, you want to consider uh, the things that uh, come from the, the quotient. You, you don't want to consider things that comes from the, the smaller group you later restrict to. So then once you decided that, okay, so I want to have a function in terms of uh, 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 this uh, basis of the quotient, and then you just uh, do some computation to match uh, the neighbor types, uh, you will see that uh, uh, this choice is a very natural choice. And also we know that uh, the contribution of uh, to the uh, Fourier coefficient will be this Fourier transform. And you see that uh, this, uh, this function written down here actually um, will later will be the uh, show up in the uh, uh, Fourier coefficients of the Ziegler Eisenstein series on GU33. And this function you can see that uh, can be easily uh, uh, PID uh, interpolated because um, it's just in terms of uh, uh, this uh, the 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 uh, the character chi. Okay, so this is uh, our choice of the section at P, and then next we are gonna explain how we compute 
uh, the local data in growth at P. Okay, so uh, the local data integral, so in, in our uh, modif modification of the four of formula, the, the local data integrals that shows up is this one. So the integral is over a quotient uh, of uh, GSP four times the uh, GU11. And so the, the quotient part is just uh, naturally the part that uh, the integrand is invariant uh, from the translation from the left. And we can see that uh, in this integral, we have this uh, section in the degenerate principle series. And then we have some uh, uh, elements in the Bessel model and an elements in the uh, Whitaker model. So then we see that uh, the integral is uh, of uh, this shape. And also we, because we are constructing PIDL function and uh, somehow we have an expectation of what the PIDL data integral should give us. So they, we expect that it should give us the, the modified oil factor to P uh, by codes and parent real. And uh, so given our uh, assumption of ordinarity, we know that the local uh, integral, uh, the local representations of this are kind of truly uh, sub quotient of inductions from Borel. And the ordinarily also uh, tells us that uh, uh, we also know the, um, the periodic evaluations of these uh, uh, characters at P. So they, they are gonna have this periodic evaluation. So I, I, I want to uh, figure out exactly what is um, this, uh, modified oil of fractal P according to the recipe of uh, Coates and Pan Real. And then I compute, so this is going to be the, the eight uh, uh, a dimensional, the, the correspond to eight dimensional Galois representation, and they are going to correspond to the, the part of uh, the GSP4 uh, times uh, the GL2 part. In the end, you will see that there will be eight characters show up here. And uh, then from this diagram, we can compute the corresponding uh, valuation of the values of these characters at the uniformizer P. And uh, so we have eight characters here to define this, uh, to have this uh, uh, modified order factor actually according to the uh, recipe by Coase and Panreal that you just pick out all the characters the valuation of its value at the uniformizer is less than zero. And uh, then you take the product of the inverse of their gamma factors. So therefore there are eight here. And if we look at which ones are, have the valuation uh, is negative. So we have this one, this one, uh, this one, and this one, so this, actually uh, half of them. And uh, so therefore, uh, the recipe of uh, Coase and Penreal tells us the modified order factor will be the, uh, the product of the inverse of the gamma factors of those four uh, characters. Okay, so this is, so now we, we, we already uh, know that uh, what we expect from the computation. So what the result should look like. And then we, we just look at this expectations or what should come out from the computation. If you look at this, then pro uh, actually probably you can get some hints, some hints for the, the computation. So um, maybe the first hint is that um, because of the shape, the shape is in some sense kind of uh, much simpler uh, than the usual L factor because it's the product of gamma factors. And you will see also it's no, uh, indicated in, the, uh, in their paper that uh, this factor only depends on 
the semi-simplification of the uh, V representation from the, uh, the local longness correspondence. So it doesn't depend on the V the link representation, it doesn't depend on that monodromy, and it only depends on the semi-simplification. So it already indicates uh, this is kind of a type of factor that in some sense simpler than the, the usual the, uh, L factor. So that somehow indicates that uh, one might expect that uh, you can have a uniform computation for all cases. So you don't need to uh, separate the cases like uh, ramified or like Stenberg or, uh, or the uh, unramified. So as long as uh, you are induced, you are sub quotients from uh, the induction from the Borel, um, then probably one can expect a uniform computation that treats all these cases. And, uh, and uh, another uh, hint uh, is that uh, we see that this is a product of uh, gamma factors that is only pick part of uh, the factors showing up here. So we only pick part of them. So uh, this actually indicates that uh, the test the test function here, uh, well, uh, it's supported on part of the, uh, bro, uh, the cells of the Brohat decomposition. And uh, this is com exactly compatible with the case we have here. We saw before when we choose this section, it's supported on the, 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 the big cell or the, the, the open cell in the Brohat decomposition. So this is completely compatible uh, with the fact here that uh, there is only a part of the, uh, the gamma factors of part of these uh, characters showing up here. And, uh, and the, uh, the last thing here is that what we see that uh, the, what we have here is, is local gamma factors. So this uh, uh, also indicates that uh, probably in the cupid, maybe the some uh, local functional uh, equation uh, is involved uh, in the computation because we know that gamma factors actually show up when we have considered the local functional equation. And also because as I, I just said before, th there is only part of this uh, uh, gamma, uh, gamma factor part of the characters here. So it's not all of them. So that means the some, uh, some uh, um, local function, no equation will show up, but this local functional equation uh, is not for uh, the representation, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the, this the, the local dating group we're considering this uh, capital pi times uh, small pi, but it should be some uh, uh, local functional equations for some smaller groups. So that indicates probably when we compute this dating group, we need to uh, first reduce the integral over this uh, a big group here uh, to some smaller group so that uh, we can expect uh, the wanted uh, gamma factor to, to, to show up. Okay, so this is just some hints that uh, will guide our computation. Okay, so then uh, for the actual computation, the, the first step is to uh, show that actually the, the the integral, indeed, you can reduce to the integral over some smaller groups like here, the GL2 and uh, uh, QP cross. And uh, so here, let me uh, quickly explain what we have here. So on the GL2 piece, we have some integral here. And uh, the, this delta is a Schwarz function, which is the, uh, the Fourier transform is like this. It's kind of uh, related to the Schwarz function we picked uh, for the uh, sections for constructing the Ziegel uh, Eisenstein family, and uh, and uh, here the this part is uh, uh, a Wolf-Berger period, and uh, this uh, sigma here is the irreducible quotient of uh, uh, induction on GL two, and uh, then I have a uh, another another two pieces over uh, QP uh, cross. And so this is actually uh, to reduce to here. It, you you, uh, you you do some uh, 
quite a bit of computation to, to reduce to this, uh, this step. And once we are in this step, actually, probably you can already see uh, the, how the gamma factors will, will uh, pop up. So you, you can see that the, the first one is an integral, uh, the integral over, over GL to QP. And uh, this Schwarz function is, we know that uh, we, we, we describe in terms of Fourier transform. And so therefore you see some uh, uh, integral uh, against a Fourier transform. And for this part, uh, uh, actually you can use the, 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 the goldman jagge functional equation to, to handle this. And uh, what you uh, expect will show up will be the, the gamma factor uh, of at S plus one, then the, the representation sigma of GL2 times twisted by cosine one inverse chi p, because we have a character here. And uh, uh, this is uh, the inverse and, uh, and the sigma is of this form. So therefore this uh, is an induction, this uh, gamma factor will factorize into the product of two. So the gamma p of is plus one half, then the either one inverse cos i one inverse chi p. And uh, also another one is the gamma factor for uh, either two times cos either two inverse times uh, cos i one inverse times chi p. And uh, so this part, then we look at this part. So it's a it's a in, uh, character again integrated against the the, the Fourier in, uh, inver, uh, inverse Fourier transform of uh, Schwarz function, and again you can either use just uh, standard uh, Tate stasis. Uh, you you will see that the this part you will you will find a gamma factor uh, for this character here the e to the three inverse and psi two inverse and chi p. And uh, the last one uh, a little bit different from the second one. So here is actually the this is a additive character of uh, uh, q p. And uh, but just uh, with some uh, a little trick, you can see that you can reduce to uh, you you will reduce to the integral showing up in the uh, Tate thesis and uh, apply the you can apply the corresponding uh, the corresponding functional equation to to get this uh, gamma factor. And then uh, once we have this, and if you compare with the above, then you will see that this is the first two gamma factor from the first integral. And uh, this is, comes from the last integral, the third one, and this comes from the second one. And you can see that uh, they just uh, exactly match uh, what we want. And uh, so this is the, yeah, in this way we compute the, uh, the periodic local data integrals at uh, the place P. Okay, so this is the, the, what the, what, uh, the story at the place P for the construction of this uh, PIDL function. And uh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna stop here. And thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Um, uh, if you have uh, more than one critical points, then I guess so to show that single p body p adic L function uh, interprets different critical values, I guess you have to show some kind of congruence between special values of uh, different critical points. Um, can you explain briefly how you check or how difficult it is to check the congruence between different critical values, different integers? Uh, yeah, so for different ones, 
actually here, uh, if you look at the integral we use here, so we use this integral uh, to, so basically what we interpolate is uh, this, this integral here. So therefore we are gonna uh, for in, get a, the, the congruence between the, the, you need it from the PIDL function will comes from the corresponding uh, Ziegler Eisenstein series on uh, GU33. But once you have the congruence here, then you restrict, you still have the congruence and uh, to integrate against the, this, this is the fixed form. So you can imagine it as a, take the, as a linear functional uh, by taking the integral against this form. So therefore, if you have the congruence here, then you will have uh, the, the congruence uh, for uh, the L values. And uh, here that's uh, the different critical point were corresponding to this part S here. If you evaluate S at a different uh, critical point, then you will have, you will get that corresponding uh, critical, the values at the critical points. And so what we do is we consider a bunch of uh, Ziegler Eisenstein series that, so the Ziegler Eisenstein series has a parameter S and uh, then we, with the different values, uh, evaluate at different S corresponding to different point, uh, critical points. And then you compare those uh, uh, Ziegler Eisenstein series by comparing their uh, Fourier expansions. And then you see the congruences among the Fourier expansions. And then you see the congruences for this Ziegler Eisenstein series. And uh, then you will get the, 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 the congruences you want for the uh, critical L values. If I post, uh, uh, I just, I have just one another question. And mm -hmm. I just wonder uh, why you assume uh, your modular home is scalar valued? And how about uh, vector valued case? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, I assume this, uh, yeah, I, I assume this assumption here uh, to, because uh, for the simplicity of computing the Archimedean data integrals. So then with this assumption, I can, I can compute the Archimedean data integral to show that it, it is equal to the modified uh, Archimedean order factor here. And uh, for more general weight case, uh, one can still do, uh, do the construction and then you will, we will be left with the Archimedean data integral to compute. And uh, uh, right now I haven't computed those Archimedean data integrals. So if later I, I do the computation, then I will, then I can do this for the general vector weight. So it's a, the, yeah, this assumption is about uh, uh, computing the Archimedean data integral. Thank you. Or questions uh, or comments? Uh, okay, uh, can I ask a question? Hey, hello? Uh, uh, sure. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, yeah, thank you for your wonderful talk. And uh, um, I'm just wondering if it is, if you can, uh, like, uh, you can really construct a, a several variable PIDL function by incorporating uh, HIDA families on GSP4 and GO2. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes, I, I can do that. But uh, I haven't done that because I, for this case, I want to, uh, more focus on the yes for for doing that for for doing that I need to introduce a more construction so uh, right now I focus on the maybe handling uh, the place at p but mm -hmm. yes by introducing those um, uh, set up the 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 the, the constructions I can do mm -hmm. uh, okay I can so do four families but maybe also maybe with uh, yeah maybe with some some assumptions about uh, uh, the high algebras mm -hmm. for the so what's uh, so do you have Peterson norm of of uh, yes yes I, I do have in, a, a in the yes. in the in the period okay so then uh, yes yes I, I do have it okay so did you also check the uh, the modified Archimedean vector at Archimedean place 
Archimedean plays. Uh, oh, you you have E infinity. Okay, so oh, okay. Uh, because because I'm yes, I'm no longer doing. here e I have the I have assumed uh, this simpler weight here. So I have I I haven't done the computation for uh, general weight. Oh, okay, okay. Because I'm I'm just uh, thinking about examples. So for example, your pi is a Yoshida lift and the. Uh, and then uh, you should have lived of uh, F1 and F2, and uh, you, you, and you also choose the same, uh, you choose the same pi on GO2 side, then you might have some trivial representation in your dimension A gal representation. So, and in that situation, uh, the Archimedean order factor, modified order factor might be, might be more complicated. Yeah, so. Yeah, I haven't checked that case, but I mm -hmm. think by using, Yoshida lift, maybe that can help computing some uh, Archimedean oh. data. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any further questions or comments? Uh, yeah, uh, the weight being at least three, is it related to cohomological? Yes, uh, uh, a weight larger or equal to three is uh, uh, then it's gonna be the, the Archimedean plate is a uh, holomorphic discrete series. Yeah, and also I think when also uh, when the weight is smaller than that, um, the Z Einstein series on G O two two can be a G O three three can be a bit more complex. Can be more complicated. So, in, in your final formula, you have a basal period associated yes, with uh, some a... ring class character. So, 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 so it's, it's a auxiliary choice. Yes, it's all. Uh, yes, it's all. Oh, sorry. Choice. Okay. And do you know the value of this basal period is non-zero or, um, or, or is a square should be some another L value, another L value of GSP for over K, something like that? Yes, I think by the GGP, you should, mm -hmm. uh, or the, the Barker's conjecture, you mm -hmm. should know that it's some uh, related to, the square should be related to L values. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, non-vanishing, I guess here, uh, what I can say probably is that there exists a, a choice. So that is non-zero. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't, I think I didn't really put um, much requirements on this, uh, the, the um, choice. The choice of so, phi, okay, I see. The lambda, lambda, sorry, okay. Yeah. I see, okay, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, if not, let's thank the speaker again. We will resume at 10.30 and the next speaker will be Xing Wan. <laughs>